Our next transformation is the dilation. It's a very interesting transformation, partly because it's unlike anything you've ever seen. It's also a very important transformation, and it has applications in wavelet theory. Wavelets is a very important topic in signal processing, and it's a topic that Gilbert Strang has pretty much turned into an application of linear algebra. So it's very interesting from that point of view as well. And one other the kink. We actually won't be able to complete this discussion because yes, we'll discover that this transformation is linear, but we won't be able to determine its eigenvalues and eigenfunctions because it's just too difficult. So we'll use it as motivation for developing robust algorithms for finding the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of a transformation. So let me tell you what dilation does. Well, still denoted by the letter D. Derivatives and dilations typically don't mix, so it's okay to use the same letter. And what it does is, to a general function f of x, is it invites you to do a substitution. It invites you to plug in 2x minus 1, that's just one form of dilation, instead of x. So that's the rule. Whenever you see x, plug in 2x minus 1, simplify or expand or do whatever you need to do or don't do anything, and that's the result. That's the image of the function f of x. So let's just look at a few examples. For example, d of x squared. So what you need to do is wherever you see x, plug in 2x minus 1. So this becomes 2x minus 1 quantity squared. In other words, it's 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So as you can see, it's a pretty complicated transformation. Turn simple functions into complicated ones. It would be also interesting to draw a graph of this function. But in any case, that's what it does. Uh, let's consider one more example. How about what it does to x minus 1? d of x now I need parentheses, minus 1 equals, well, let's see, plug in 2x minus 1 instead of x, and we end up with 2x minus 2. And lo and behold, I think we just stumbled upon an eigenfunction of this transformation. x minus 1 becomes 2 times x minus 1, and x minus 1 is the eigenfunction, and 2 is the corresponding eigenvalue. All right, let's consider one more example. Uh, D, just we're going to target our linearity test, so we'll consider the sum of these functions, x squared plus x minus 1. Now, the rule remains the same. Wherever you see x, plug in 2x minus 1. So this will be 2x minus 1 quantity squared. Plug in 2x minus 1 here. All right, so what we see is that this will produce this, and this part will produce this part. So the combined result is the sum of the two. So it's 4x squared, 4x squared minus 2x minus 1. And what we also see from this example is the linear property of this transformation. Because to determine, it's pretty much staring right at you. It's kind of an unusual thing. We've never encountered a transformation like this before. So it may take some time to wrap your mind around it. But once you understand the mechanics, you realize that it didn't matter whether we transformed the functions first and then added them together or, or add them together first and then transform the result, which kind of included transforming individual parts first and then adding up the results anyway. So it's the same thing and it would be the exact same thing with multiplication by a constant. So yes, this transformation is linear. Now, what are its eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Well, we accidentally stumbled upon one. But can you find another one? Even if you restrict your attention to, let's say, cubic polynomials. Uh, we don't know how many eigenvalues and eigenfunctions there are. So how would you go about finding it? Trial and error is not a bad approach, but in this case, it's not a great approach because we don't have much of an intuition for what this transformation does. So you won't be able to have any system to trial and error. So you might be able to succeed. You might not be able to succeed. I think in this case you will succeed, especially if you 
think about what's really going on with this example, you will be able to guess what the other eigenvalues and eigenfunctions are. But let's not do that. Let's instead say, you know what? It's not easy. Wouldn't it be nice to have a robust way of discovering eigenvalues and eigenvectors, in this case, eigenfunctions? Just like in the case of linear systems, when it was easy to detect what the relationships among the columns were and the right-hand side to the columns, we went ahead and used it. But when we didn't know what those relationships were, when those relationships were not easy to determine, we used Gaussian elimination, which after a few steps, or at the very least a finite number of steps, revealed those relationships to us. It was the height of robustness. So we're hoping for something like that here as well. We're not able to see the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So let's try to think of a robust way of discovering those uh, special, uh, special functions. So in other words, our goal is to develop robust theory of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions that would allow us for any transformation to determine its eigenvalues and eigenfunctions uh, in the same way or in the same or pursuing by the same type of strategy. That's our goal. It's a relatively long-term goal. Maybe it's a medium-term goal, but we'll certainly get there. Okay, so this completes the dilation example.